Hello everyone, welcome back to our my 2020 tutorial series. We've been working on bringing our guy over here. Let me uh, set this one over here back down to zero. There we go. All right, so in this lesson, we're gonna continue on with our construction worker here. And let's go ahead and start with doing the spline IK. Okay. Um, we're going to go to, uh, back to rigging and we're going to do a skeleton IK spline IK handle. That's what we want. And we're going to make it go from this joint here on the hips up to this neck joint. We don't want it to go down here in the root. We're leaving the root alone. So click on this one here. And then onto this one here. There we go. It's a little hard to see um, through the mesh here, but if I turn on transparency, you can see it. Now, what's going on here? This isn't like the other IK handles that you may have seen, like on this down here, or for the legs. This one, you can't just grab the handle and like move it around. If you grab the move tool, you see like nothing really even pops up, right? Click on move, no move handles. Um, and the reason why is because the spline IK isn't meant to be grabbed like a target. Um, this little handle here doesn't really do anything. What really does all the work is this curve that you can see now running through all the joints. And we're going to use that curve to create um, some control inside his uh, stomach and his back and through all these joints going in here. So what I'm going to need to do is isolate that curve so I can get to the, the vertexes of it so we can create some controls for the spline IK. It's the only real way we can handle this IK handle. Um, so what I'll do is let's see here. Actually let's turn off we'll just go to show and let's just turn off joints. There we go. So I can just go ahead and click on it. You can see that the curve is actually right in here. So now if I go to control vertexes, oops right mouse button, control vertexes. Now you can see there's these control vertexes here I can grab. And if you look over here, you can still see that the joints are here. So if I grab this control vertex, you can see how it's controlling the spine joints here, which makes towards the control. Oops. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll select it over here. Nope. Okay, let's get rid of the IK handles. I can grab that one. Uh, IK handles. So then I can grab this one. You can see how it controls the back so we can use that to help it bend over. Okay. So what we're going to need to do so we can control these vertexes, because we can't just use the IK handle, um, is we're going to create something called a cluster. So we're going to go to constrain and, I'm sorry, not constrain, deform, and at the top there's a cluster. There we go. Create our first cluster handle. And this creates a curve that we can actually grab and use. It doesn't, it's not a component type, so that works for us. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna select this control again, go back to control vertex mode, and I'm gonna go back to deform and cluster. Okay, there's our second cluster. Where'd it go? Hmm, I don't think I had the control vertex. So I'll have to undo that one. Let's try that one more time. Control vertex, select this vertex here and go to deform and cluster. There we go. So it happens when I talk a little too much, I'm not paying attention to exactly what I'm doing here. All right, control vertex, select this one here. And again, we're gonna go to deform and cluster. Okay, same thing here on this one. Control vertex, select the last one here. Deform and cluster, there we go. Perfect. Okay, now if we want to, we can go the extra mile and actually make it to where these clusters are actually um, snapped to their corresponding joints. So if I want to go through and select all of these guys, and let's also select the joint chain here, and then isolate them, I can make it to where, do I have a foot that's still up? Sorry, I'm distracted. I can see the joint here is off. So. I think that I have one foot that's still elevated. I'll have to fix that here in a minute. I'll go back and do that though. Okay, so first let's go to number four here. Number four is pretty close to where we want it to, but if we want to make it to where 
it's right there in the center. You want to go to the pivot mode, so you press D and you hold down V and you can just snap it. Oops, but don't turn the radius on it. So V. Okay, so that's good. Let's take the next one here. And we're going to snap this one down to this joint. So hold down V. Same thing. I'm just going to snap it down to that one. I'll take this one here. Oops. And I'll snap it down to this one. And this last one here. I have to decide this is averaging these three, these uh, four clusters. I suppose I could change the spans on that curve, but that should be okay. Let's actually let's go down one. Let's have this be. Okay, that one's good, and this one is right on there. Okay. And really, all this did for me is just made it to where when I select on these. These clusters are actually located on the spine versus having their their locator in an uh, object location versus the the snap location. Okay, so that works. That's good. Let's go ahead and uh, create the controls that will control this. Okay, so let's create a. A back. Well, no. Let's start at the bottom here. We'll create a hip sway control first. Okay, so we're going to go to create, and we're going to go to uh, nerves primitives, and we're going to create ourselves a circle. And this is going to be our hip sway. Okay, we're snapping it right in the same spot that our cluster is at on, on that hip joint. And I'm just going to scale this one up. Okay, that's pretty good. There's the one that's up. Let's go ahead and bring this one down here too. Okay, now do I want this to um, have any special look to it? That's kind of sometimes help to have a special look to this one, um, just because we're also gonna have an overall hips control that's underneath it that controls the root. Um, so why don't I go ahead and uh, pick every other vertex, kind of like what I did for the knee controls down there, and I'll just zoom these in like that. Let's make it a little bit different. And I'm going to create a new uh, control group as well in my control layer editor here. So I'm going to call this one just my control center. And we'll save that. There we go. And let's freeze the transforms on this one. Switch this over to the Poly Modeling tab. Freeze transforms. There we go. And we're going to add it to, or we're going to make this one into a, so opening back up that center layer. And we're going to turn this into a yellow one. So yellow is center, green for left, red for right. There we go. And let's, while we're here, let's go ahead and uh, add a constraint to this. So if I go ahead and click on this one and then control click this one here, I can then go ahead and do a constraint point. Okay, so then if I go ahead and pull forward, or if I do uh, side to side, get a little hip sway, that is what I'm after. That's perfect. Okay, let's go ahead and call this one control hip sway okay and I'm also going to rename this one as cluster hip sway okay so that one's good let's go up and we're going to do another one this one we'll just leave as a circle so we're going to go to create nerves primitives and we'll create another circle here okay we're going to scale this one up 
and we will vertex snap this one onto this joint because that's where this cluster is actually being snapped onto, right? Oh, looks like I didn't actually snap it on there though. Now let's scale it down a little bit. That should be good. Kind of like a got a little bit of a tum on him, so I'm kind of feeling like maybe I should have it be scaled out this way a little bit. A little bit wider. There we go. I'll freeze transforms in that one. I'll call it control abs. And this one here is our cluster abs. So I'll go ahead and select my control and I will control select my apps cluster. Now you can select it inside your outliner too, I, or I, as I was just doing, but you could also select them inside your viewport. It's up to you how you want to do it. Selection doesn't really matter as long as they're selected in the appropriate order. So let's go ahead and go to constraint and again a point constraint. Okay. Go ahead and test this one out. That's good. Got a little bit of That's what we want. Okay. We're going to do another one for the ab or for the chest up here. So let's go ahead and actually add this one into the layer. Okay. This one here is going to be our cluster chest. And to do this one, I'm actually going to do something a little bit different because, like, you know, these circles are pretty helpful, but, you know, sometimes you need something that's, that works with the body a little bit more. So I'm going to show you how to create a custom curve that will do the same thing as all the other curves. It just makes it to where it works a little bit more um, aesthetically with the model that we're working with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a box. So I'm just going to create a normal polygon cube here. Okay, let's move it off to the side here. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scale this up a little bit. And you don't have to necessarily have it be just a cube if you don't want to. You can make this a little more complex if you feel like you need to. Um, but just to keep things simple for now, I'm just going to leave it as a cube. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it or turn on create nerves curve tool, CV curve tool. You guys should be kind of familiar with this one. Anyone who's been in my class should know this one. Okay, so what we're going to want to do is we want to snap this curve onto each one of the points going all the way around. See now it's okay if they, these points overlap. So you can go all the way around and then do all the verticals and then around the bottom as long as it goes all the way around and touches all the edges. So for me, I'm gonna start on the top here and I'll turn on X-ray just so you can see these things pop in. So I'm gonna hold down V and snap the first one right there. Next one will be right here. I'm just holding down V that snaps it onto the vertex of this object and it just helps me, oh, but I made my own mistake. So I'll go ahead and show you the mistake I made. I forgot to turn on the submenu for our CV curve tool so that I can take it off cubic, which makes that curves, which makes good for hoses and pipes and stuff, but not so much if we're trying to make it straight. So I need to switch this back over to linear and that will make it where it works good for us. Okay, so now I can go ahead and hold down V. We'll start again and I'll go ahead and make straight lines and we won't get that, that curve again this time. So let's go ahead and pop down here now. And if I want, I can go back up here and then back down. Yes, there's an overlap there, but um, it doesn't matter with these nerves curves. Doesn't add anything to the render time, doesn't make anything broken in the animation. Um, and I just need one more for over here. And let's press return to complete it. And I can select the model and say, and just hit delete. Then I'm left behind with is this square, which I can now go ahead and click on, center the pivot, and then I can move it back over here and use this as my chest control. Um, usually this also doubles as uh, maybe my hand control as well, so I'm just going to duplicate one of these off and set it off to the side so I don't have to recreate this chest control if I don't want to. I'm going to go ahead and bring it down here, and I'm going to scale it up just a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to go to control vertex mode. I'm going to select these vertexes on the bottom. So I'll select them on this side and these ones on this side. 
I'm going to scale these ones apart just a little bit. There we go. And then these ones on the top, just select both of them. I'm going to scale them together. Okay, that's good. And let's scale the front. He's got a little bit of a belly here. I want to make sure that you know the con the chest control is you know easy to select. That's the point of these controls. Is it makes it to where it's easier to grab things. Okay, and we'll have to come back over here, and that's good. Okay. So, freeze transforms. Delete history. This one's going to be called control underscore chest. And this chest control obviously is going to have a point constraint on it to here. So I'm going to hold down control, just click the cluster chest, and go to constraint and point. Okay. So make it to where now we can take care of that. And actually, let me undo that because I want to make sure that the, the pivot point for this is the same as the cluster. So I'm just going to press D and then vertex snap the pivot point. Oops. Let's see here. I might have not gone back far enough. Yeah. There's our point constraint still in there. So D and hold down V. Oh, no, it's still there. Okay. D and V. There we go. No. Don't want to do that tilting. There we go, right there. Press D. Now I can go ahead and do that constraint point. There we go. That's good. All right. Last one is this one up here, and this is going to be our back. So to do this one I usually like to have an arrow that takes care of this one. So I'm going to again just pop over to my side view here. Panels, orthographic, side view. Okay. So I'm going to create an arrow and that's going to make up, going to be my back control. So let's go ahead and turn on grid snapping. That's this little magnet right here. And then I'm going to turn on create various primitives. Uh, no, I'm sorry, not nervous primitives. Um, curve tools, CV curve tool. And since I have grid snapping on, I can just go ahead and start to draw out what an arrow would look like. Uh, let's do show all. Oh, I'm on isolate mode, that's why. There we go. Okay, so let's start over here. Turn off x-ray, turn off isolate, turn back on CV curve tool. Sorry, that was my bad. Okay, so we're going to start out right here and we'll just go down, skip two, skip two going this way, go up one, go out three or four, go up two, come back four, go up one, press enter to complete, and now we have this little control that will be our back control. And I'm going to center the pivot on this one. And I'm going to scale this down a little bit. And I'm going to move it up to where it's fairly close. Let's see if I can snap it on, turn off grid snapping for a moment, see if I can snap the object actually onto this joint here. So then I can move it straight back, so then it's pointing right at the joint that's pushing on. And then I can go ahead and move the pivot point. So I'll press D, hold down V, and then just vertex snap it to where it's right where that cluster is at. Press D again to exit out of pivot mode. And we're going to freeze the transforms and call this one control back. Okay. And now we're also going to take this last control handle here, make sure it's called cluster back. And we're going to do a point constraint. So we're going to select this one here, and we're going to control select the cluster back here, and do a constraint point again. Okay. So now this one controls the back movement, and that's good. All right. And let's 
go ahead and select both these controls here and add them to this layer. So right mouse button, click on it and hit add selected objects. So now they're both yellow as well. All right, so that's good guys. Um, let's go ahead and save, we're about 20 minutes in. Um, all right, so in the next lesson, we're going to create the arms and controls for the arms and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, so thanks for watching guys and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.